George felt awful. He'd kept the man up again. Okay, George, I'm going on my run. <laughs> Maybe after a cup of tea. If only he had some way to quietly find the kitchen in the dark. He couldn't see or hear his way. Maybe George could taste his way. George, don't eat off the floor. Use a sponge. Okay, so he couldn't use taste. What other senses were there? Want some honey in your oatmeal? Maybe touch. If George felt honey with his feet, he'd know he was going the wrong way. He was so excited about his path, he could hardly wait until he couldn't fall asleep to try it out. <laughs> the honey was working. He was finding his way by touch. <gasps> Trouble is, once you step in honey, it sticks to your feet. And before you know it, it feels like it's everywhere. George, what are you do- Oh. Ooh. George needed to feel his way with something less messy. Maybe something soft. <sighs> I'm going for a ride, George. <laughs> George's soft path had to work. Oh, what? Because the man's race was tomorrow, and he needed to get some sleep. Oh, ah! oh. oh. I'm okay. <laughs> George's stuffed animals would tell him where the furniture was, but he needed more soft things to lead him to the kitchen. George sure hoped his path worked. Sorry, so late. I kept falling asleep. Big race tomorrow. Gotta go to bed early. Right after supper. <laughs> George didn't even have to wait until bedtime to try his soft path out. He did it. He'd made it to the kitchen, and he didn't wake the man. <laughs> In fact, he used his path many, many, many times. Because he was so excited about the man's race tomorrow, he was the one who couldn't sleep. The next morning, George was there to cheer on the man as he swam. And rode. And ran his way to the finish line. Who oh, did you see that, jo uh, George?
the pigeon made his choice. <laughs> the pipe cleaner tree looked nice. But a tree needs to be bigger. Research. It wasn't perfect. Uh -oh. Oh. Yet. <laughs> George's tree had everything a tree has, including a homing pigeon in his new home. <laughs> oh, look at this! Look at this! Wow, that's a lot of dirt. I left Huntley in charge, and when I came back, dirt everywhere. <laughs> if only I spoke dachshund. I wish you spoke pigeon. Is that a tree? George had never felt prouder. Now that he had the perfect home, the bird could live here forever. <laughs> Compass, good to see you. Yeah, Compass is an almost homing pigeon. He won't admit he has a weak sense of direction. <laughs> George, the doorman is the pigeon's friend. He came to take him home. to his real home. Everybody, look who's home! <laughs> See, he's back where he belongs. <laughs> I bought it for birds to sit in so you can draw them. Nice effort, George. But birds want to sit in a real tree. <coughs> Compass, look, a real tree for you. Make yourself at home. Pigeon still didn't know what George was, but he sure made a good tree. George, look at the size of this squash I pulled out of the garden. Well, it always points
points north. You figure out which way you want to go, and you can tell where you're facing because you always know which way is north. <laughs> hey, can I have that dirt? My bunny dug holes all over the lawn, and Dad says I have to fill them up. <laughs> Boy, can that bunny dig. <laughs> Thanks. Anything you want to borrow, just ask. Gophers stroll in, eat delicious grapes, trigger the rope, gate slams shut, and wham! Gotcha, gophers! Ooh, ooh, ooh! Hey, gophers, come on in. Here, have a delicious grape. <gasps> oh, no! No, the skin! No! Uh, uh. Are you here to catch them or feed them? <coughs> Just uh, <laughs> testing out the gopher cage. <laughs> Works. It's pretty good. Oh, oh boy, I'm back. Don't worry. I'm gonna go get the extra heavy equipment, which has never, ever failed. I'll just be back. I'm gonna go. George had everything he needed. A compass, a professional digger, and a way to get rid of the used dirt. All he needed was enough time. You, George? <laughs> Calhoun, I have decided the gophers aren't as annoying as you. You go. The gophers can stay. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> oh, what a mess. So, uh, who wants to help me clean this up? I can pay in grapes. This was wrong. Apples were still at squirrel level. There had to be some way to restart everything. Ah! 
All of the Rankin's beautiful apples were being chopped to bits. A squirrel-proof lid. George thought that was a good idea. It sure went on tightly. Too tight, what a mess. George had to do something. The golden liquid tasted good, a lot like apples. But there was just too much of it. Luckily, someone had left behind some empty milk containers. A few more. There had to be a way to stop this thing. Odd. <sighs> George, do you know where my yellow hat is? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> where is it? <laughs> 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 huh? How did that happen? <laughs> no more bottles. <laughs> oh, gee, he hasn't filled the card yet. Hey, up there, no playing in the trees till all the picking's done, thank you. Oh, I, I, I'm just getting my hat. The Rankins would surely be mad that George ruined all of their apples. You done? <laughs> A fantastic job! All that cider already pressed and bottled? <gasps> Thank you, George! <laughs> George? <laughs> so who'd have thought a monkey would do the hard work while his human friend was outside swinging in the trees? But I, I, I just need... Oh, the important thing is the harvest is in. Uh, that was fast. Wow, this is some operation. Designed and built it myself. See, the apples are washed here, and then we lift them up to the chopper. Mm-hmm, chopped apples give more juice. That's right. We press the juice out of the apples here, and then bottle it down here. <sighs> So George didn't ruin the apples after all. He just turned them into cider. <laughs> You've got an unusual way of stacking. <laughs> yeah, George, if you weren't careful, the Rankins could have had quite a mess on their hands. Oh, look, an apple got caught. I'll get it. No, don't. <laughs> oh. Oh. <sighs> Here, George, you earned it. <laughs> George
George appreciated it. But he'd had enough apples for one day. The contestants lined up. And the signal was given to start the race. The leading tower team was the first to take off. What did we say about claws in the balloon? They landed in Florence, Italy, nine minutes later. Lieutenant Doxy was sure he would win the race. And then he wasn't. Sir, the drive belt snapped. We can't go if the prop don't spin. There was no chance of winning now. But then... The monkey tightened his rubber band one turn too many. Chuck Monkey had to help, but his plane couldn't fly. Fortunately, Doxy's ship was still on the ground. He explained the emergency as they took off. But Lieutenant Doxy didn't understand. The monkey ruined his ship, and now he was about to do the same to the Doxies. I got a belt, sir! Come back! But they couldn't go back because they couldn't control the ship. Ooh. <laughs> if they didn't get a belt quickly, they too would blow into the Eiffel Tower. Clothes for a belt? What a great idea! <laughs> Go! <laughs> How can I ever thank you? Putting the Baron in an emergency life balloon, the Clever Flyers used their ship's propellers to create a wind to blow him back to the landing field. They saved the Baron. But they were in last place. Still, no obstacle was too big for Chuck Monkey and Lieutenant Duxy. Maybe together they could win this race. <laughs> It wasn't 1909. Huntley wasn't in a race. And his balloon was still stuck. But if it was a dream, why could he still hear his airship's propeller? The fan. It sounded a lot like a propeller. And it looked a lot like a propeller. And if it moved air, it would move things that were in the air, right? George raced back without the fishing pole because he had another idea. <laughs> and it was the same idea that Hundley just had. George aimed the fan. Hundley barked orders like a famous aviator. Aiming the wind behind the balloon, George could push it where he wanted it to go. Air conditioning is all fixed. Hundley, you're relieved from duty. You want to go to the park and fly that plane, George? Hundley had something else he needed to do. <laughs> Won't be needing this anymore. You want it on? Okay. Kind of noisy if you want a nap. It was exactly what Hundley wanted to hear. Because he had some unfinished business back in 1909. <laughs> With the aid of a monkey, the Duxy is pulling ahead. Folks, if they win this one, people will be talking about this victory a hundred years from now. 
The man went home, but George chose to stay out in case he could do more good and get more rewards. <laughs> George sure picked the right person to help. Is one of you Steve? I forgot to leave this for a Steve at 11N Avenue. If it's not you, I'll go back and bring it myself. No, that's me. It's the new game I ordered. Ozone Piercing Highway Weasels 3. Thanks. Isn't that our neighbor monkey? His name is George. George, you're doing that the hard way. You need wheels. I think he wants to give these back to the mail carrier lady. <laughs> she doesn't want it back. It's her job to leave packages for people. <laughs> See? Ooh. This number is the number on our building. That shows her where to leave it. The numbers on all of them match the buildings. <laughs> Didn't you notice? His pursuit of free fresh fruit had driven him to crime. Accidentally. Anything for this building? <laughs> Hold it. That says 15. Huh? Ooh. <laughs> We have to find one that says eight. You're gonna have to move faster than this. While Betsy and George searched, Steve kept on delivering. You organized them. Good job, George. None for eight, but we have three packages for 14. Even numbers are on this side of the street, odd on that side. Okay, <laughs> let's roll. So they set out to try their system. Turkey helped too. Steve ran fast, but his packages were out of order, while the monkey girl dog team delivered their packages in a row. I've delivered 11 packages. Hey, where'd all the packages go? <laughs> we just delivered our 11th also. So whoever delivers their next one fastest wins. 20? Back across the street again? <gasps> We're gonna win. He's going far away. This one is for 9N Avenue. <laughs> Seven and eleven. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Number nine. <laughs> you found it. Well, now I was there when that package was delivered. So someone must have stolen it. Uh, send a policeman. Uh, send two policemen. Uh, no, four. I want someone arrested. <laughs> Found it. <laughs> Right, you can play. <laughs> yeah, George! We did it! <laughs> I can't believe it! It was my game. I left it here. <laughs> Where could it have gone? I was beating the record and I was on level seven!
Lucky had never seen one of these before. He liked the way it felt. He liked the way it sounded. But he did not like the way it smelled. <laughs> no, that didn't smell like Hundley. But what did Hundley smell like? Oh yeah, he smelled like that Hundley smell. <laughs> now where could George get something that smelled like Hundley? This pillow smelled like Hundley, and then some. <laughs> Hundley sure didn't like to share his pillow. That was the sound of Lucky's friend. Hundley was here. No doubt about it, Hundley was inside this thing. But Lucky was sure Hundley was in here somewhere. Lucky was somewhere in the walls. Hi, George. We're on our way home with pizza and dinosaur bones. I hope you and Lucky are having fun. How could he find Lucky behind the wall if he couldn't see or hear him? At that moment, Hundley realized every undignified moment of his life involved George. Hundley had enough. Now his nose was starting to itch. Lucky recognized that sound. George had to hope he was right. The more Hundley sneezed, the closer he was to Lucky. George knew exactly where Lucky was, except he was still inside the wall. I heard Hunley sneezing through the grate downstairs. Please keep that cat away. Where is the cat? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, nobody move. <laughs> All right, little guy, you're free. <laughs> oh, George, wait till you hear about the weird digging we did uh, today. <laughs> What, 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 what? I'm learning that sometimes it's better not to even ask.
<laughs> that rock was the snowman's head. Ooh, yeah! That one was his middle. And that was his bottom. Just one problem. Boulders were heavy. Making a summer snowman was harder than George had thought. <sighs> All this heat and sand makes the farm feel like the desert. <laughs> now, now, without this sand, we can't make grout for our fireplace. Huh? Wet sand stuck together. It didn't melt. It wasn't heavy. <laughs> and George knew where to find tons of it. <laughs> ah, the summer shuttle's ready, George. Where should we take her for a test drive? <laughs> the beach? Oh. Yeah, why not? Hey, maybe the Rankins and Bill would like to come along, too. <laughs> ah, oh, there is nothing like a crisp, cool sea breeze. Served? Oh, look at all this sand. Imagine how much grout we could make. <laughs> Even with the right mix of sand and water, it was impossible to roll a ball of sand like snow. Then George remembered how he made a sand castle. He could shape the sand without rolling it. Hi, George. Making a bigger and better sand castle? <laughs> oh, I get it. A snowman made of sand. <laughs> Neat idea. Wow. You'd never catch bugs that big on the farm. That's because these are sand crabs. Don't you know what a crab looks like? This can't be the first time you've been to the beach. Can it? No, no of course not. Uh, we were here not more than, uh, oh, 46 years ago. 49. Huh. <laughs> what is that? Oh, can't you tell? It's a snowman. A snowman needs branches for arms. Yes, and coal for its smiling face. Hey! We could find those things. Let's go. Why not? Let's all make a snowman. Look, I've got his arms. And here's a perfect nose. This kelp will work just fine. <laughs> Hey, it's starting to look like winter on the hottest day of the year. George, this is one snowman that'll never melt. My, that cool rain feels nice. Ah! SOS, save our snowman. Hurry. Sorry we couldn't stop the rain, George. Hey, cheer up. Helping you build your summer snowman kept us all cool. He's right. The breeze, the ocean, and the rain made me forget there was a heat wave. <laughs> That's right. Ah! <laughs>
<laughs> Come on! I'm ready! Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> George never forgot how fun it was to build a snowman at the beach. But on a freezing cold winter day, all he needed was some sand.